This is a heavy board. Damn. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another keyboard video. This channel is becoming keyboard obsessed and I'm all for it. If you're all for it, hit subscribe and leave it a like. But anyway, today we've got the M1 V3 from Monsgeek and this thing is a beast. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about this thing. Okay, so let's start off with the switches. This is the Akko V3 Piano Pro Switch, which is also in my other keyboard, which we covered before this, which is the MU01. If you haven't seen that video, it'll be linked at the end of this video. This is a 75% layout, giving you that extra space on the desk for your mouse. Keycaps that are provided with this are side printed backlit keycaps with the south facing RGB and they do come in this nice gradient effect so it goes from a, a white to a black and uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of digging it not gonna lie. OEM profile so it's got a little bit of curvature but it's not too much like the MX profile where it's very like whoosh, you know what I'm saying you know what I mean that helps with obviously playing a long periods of time and also helps with your typos or your mistakes and your clickety clack helps with that apparently I don't know but the keycaps are PBT double shot, so they are very well made and very reliable. The knob on the right here allows you to turn up the volume and turn down the volume, or even the brightness of the board itself, which you just click in and that switches between volume and the, the brightness. But with using software, you can program this button to do whatever you want. So you could even have this programmed to open up software if you really wanted to. I don't know if that's possible, but if it's programmable, anything's possible, right? Now the battery in this is a 6,000 milliamp battery. So it is a whopping battery in the back there. That might be why it's so heavy. Also could be the fact that the case is fully aluminum or aluminum, whatever you want to say. Now this board is also five pin hot swappable. So you can get any other keycaps and also switches if you really wanted to switch this out and make it your own, give it a bit more customization if you will. And the cool thing about this is it works on MacBook, Mac PC, iPads, iPhones, Android, Windows, anything that it can connect to wirelessly or Bluetooth, it's going to work. But unlike the MU01 where the USB-C was on the very right, this one is on the very left. It is also plate mounted stabilizers so you know gives that extra gives that extra stability from wobbly keycaps. But before I move on to the pros and cons I have found personally using this board after last week and so I'm going to just say how it's sort of stacked out because there's a lot in this might be why it's so heavy but the bottom is obviously the aluminium bottom case then you've got a VHB installation layer an EPDM Pyron absorption layer a PCBA a IXPE switch pad Pyron plate foam polycarbonated plate aluminium top case metal knob switches and then keycaps that is all squished into this little baby it's all squished into that that's impressive enough of the specifications let's go on to build quality now it is like i said heavy you're not going to be lugging this about this thing weighs a ton at the back as well so it's very light at the front heavy on the back so it's not balanced at all it is very back end so if you wanted to you know start dragging this around your desk i mean you're going to be dragging it for me i feel that makes it feel more premium also on the back it's nice engraved they're just the logo from Mons Geek. So yeah, I mean build quality, absolutely fantastic. The keycaps feel great being that, you know, double shot PBT. Switches again, as they are the same switches in the MU01, I love the sound of them. These keycaps give them a bit of a different sound, obviously with the, with the aluminium case as well, compared to a wooden case. So they do have a bit more of a thockier sound, if you will, instead of it being more creamy, there'll be a sound clip at the end of the video. So watch out for that. Now the knob on here doesn't feel such high quality. I don't know what it is, but it, it's weird it doesn't feel metal it feels plastic with like a metal sort of dust coating uh, unlike the actual board like you can hear it's got that ring to it it that you know you, you know when you hit metal and it goes whoosh, with the button it seems very plasticky I, I don't think it is i think it is metal but it's just not got the same quality as the board itself. This has the same as the wooden keyboard where if you haven't seen that video again, it'll be linked at the end. Under the caps lock keycap, there is the switch to turn it on and off. I don't like, why a switch underneath? Why not just have it on the back or on the side or somewhere easy to get it? Now this battery though does last a lot longer than the wooden one. I don't know if that's because it's a bigger battery or I, I can't actually remember the size of the wooden keyboard's battery. It still does the whole features of turning off whenever it's 
not been activated for a while it takes a while to then connect to the PC so you do lose that good little second to you know use the board a bit frustrating when you are playing games or typing and you just pop off to get a drink come back and your board's disconnected you go click the button and it takes a little while for it to reconnect that's just personal preference so someone else that might not even bother them if it bothered me that much I would just plug it in but then when you plug these in you do get left with a little red LED so if I have my whole board as white if I plug it in it will always have a red LED in the space bar because it will show that it's charging which I think it sort of ruins the whole aesthetic of the board if, if I'm honest I get it you've got to indicate that it's charged or when it's charging but if I'm in wired mode I don't need it charged you know I'm constantly pushing power through this thing so that that LED needs to sort of not be on. But uh, yeah, other than that, you know, there's nothing really bad about this board. Now with the price, I'll let you guys go down in the description and check for yourself because there could be discounts on. It could even be sold out. So I don't want to tell you a price and it'd be wrong. So I'll let you guys go there and check it. And if there's a little discount code as well, you'll obviously get some extra bonus there. But for me, I do enjoy this board. It's just not right for me when I'm gaming. So I do switch it out for a smaller board. More likely use this when I'm editing photos or video. I wouldn't use it if I was gaming or just everyday general use because I, I hardly ever use these buttons I'm happy to press the FN and do it that way and it's a very heavy board so you know I I don't tend to be lugging this baby about but that's everything I can really say about the board it is a fantastic built board don't get me wrong it sounds great which you'll hear it looks good and you can change it however you want with doing any modification because it's a very simple board to take apart as well you've just got the screws whap it about and you can do your little tape mods and all your other stuff so in the comments below let me know what you guys think and remember before i end the video there'll be a little sound clip so look out for that but other than that guys capture create captivate and i'll see you all in the next video